Slowly but surely, the world is coming around to the view that the recent five-day conflict between India and Pakistan is a decisive win for India. We're going to cover some comments from you know experts in this area, and then what made this thing possible. If you have to say it in one word, it is Akash Tir. What exactly is Akash Tir? It is AI-powered air defense system that was jointly developed by a couple of organizations in India. We'll go into all that stuff. I have a small slide deck to share with you. Please like this video. And if you have not already subscribed to our channel, kindly do so. Here we go. How Akash Tir stuns the world. Really? Many people are still in denial that uh, India used uh, Akash Tir for the most part in defending itself to all the drones that came from China and Turkey and so on and so forth. How did this happen? What makes this um, system so potent and powerful? All that stuff you're going to examine here. This is something that's like a you know quick educational tutorial on what is it that India needs to be really proud of. This is something that came from the left field. The world did not expect it. And now the world is playing catch up. Can you believe that? The world is playing catch up. So let's take a quick look at what makes this thing so powerful. Uh, now we are going to first say who are the people who are acknowledging, whether it is grudgingly or not, that India won a decisive war. First, Tom Cooper, Austrian military historian, he said that this was a clear-cut victory for India. Why? Because India conducted precision missile strikes deep within Pakistani territory and targeting nuclear uh, storage space. You know now that at least four are in question, not just two. The first two were Kirana Hills and Chagai Hills. But now we are talking about perhaps Karachi as well as Kahuta. So all these things have been taken out, perhaps all in one shot because there was no time to do anything else, which is probably why United States got involved. And there's another theory as to why US got involved in it. And I'll come to that also in just a minute. Now, what did Tom Cooper say? Tom Cooper highlighted pa Pakistan's lack of credible retaliation capability. He criticized Western media for downplaying India's achievements. He praised India's use of BrahMos and Scalp EG missiles unmatched in Pakistan's arsenal. According to him, this prompted Pakistan's DGMO, Director General of Military Operations, to contact India to request a ceasefire, indicating a significant military disadvantage. Now, let's see what uh, another specialist, John Spencer from the Modern War Institute, had to say. He said, that this system, which is indigenous, that is meaning that it's completely developed from ground up within India and also using India's chips. See, what happens is when you use your own chips, when you make your own chips and use them, then the world doesn't come to know. Because most of the time, how CIA or US or Russia or UK, any of these guys know what you are developing is by looking at what India is sourcing. And if they look at, okay, this defense lab is getting these components, they know what exactly is uh, the end use for that. But if you do everything yourself, then you have completely put a cover over what you are doing. So Akash Deep has come as a complete surprise to the world. And now the world is playing catch up. And I'll tell you how they are playing catch up. Um, John Spencer goes on to say that China's weapon systems failed to counter Indian strike while India's domestic technology succeeded spectacularly. The strikes forced Pakistan to shut down air operations nationwide, impacting major hubs. Now, what exactly is Akarse? We get into the nuts and bolts of Akarse. This is India's game-changing stealth combat system. It's an indigenous, artificial intelligence-driven, autonomous defense and attack coordination system jointly developed by the Defense Research Development Organization, DRDO, Bharat Electronics Limited, Bell, and the ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization. Akashir integrates satellites such as Kartosat and RISAT, and the NAVIC navigation system, stealth drones with an autonomous AI command cloud, ground radars, and mobile war rooms. My understanding is that for the most part, it can do air defense, but it also has a striking capability. We'll come to that in just a moment. I hope you've already liked this video because a lot of time and effort has gone into compiling this data. We've got a bunch of reference links for you to take a look at it, to acquaint yourself with something that India has pulled off. Truly spectacular. Zero human delay loop. What does that mean? That means that there is no uh, delay because of human intervention. 
everything was connected to Akashdeep control system. So people in various sectors could get immediate information about what was happening. How is this different? Well, it has troop control center, troop level radar, flight level radar, central acquisition radar, and flight control center. It has all these things and it can basically combine everything so that the information that it is getting can be shared instantly among all these various components. If you are going to do some sort of an action against enemy country, you need to be able to respond instantly. That is how India could coordinate strikes at almost the same time on 11 air bases, probably more than that. But you get the idea. How did they do, they do that? The real-time satellite surveillance was done using ISRO's Earth observation satellites. Navic GPS, Navic is uh, India's own global positioning system. <coughs> Turns out that Navic is superior over South Asian region, over even United States satellite because of its intimate knowledge of the terrain. Because of course, India needs to worry only about South Asia, Asia. Akash, these swarm drones feature in 5 to 10 kilogram payload. So they have the swarm drones mode where they can counterattack including explosives, jammers, and reconnaissance kits, a stealth designed to evade detection by Pakistan and Chinese radars, and the ability to self-reprogram missions mid-flight. Self-reprogram missions mid-flight. It's also called as a uh, it's, 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 it's loitering drone. You know, what it means is that, let's say that somebody fired the drone from this point. And then they immediately started moving it to some other place, like, for example, to this place. The drone from Akashdeep took off and it knows that it has, the target has moved. So it will program itself instead of coming to here, instead of coming to here, it comes to here. And the, the other feature here is there is a mobile plug and strike system that can be operable even from Jeep mounted field center. So you can see here how it can be used, how it can be deployed in the field. And, and that's what makes it so powerful. You, you can see the big picture here. You can see the satellites, how these satellites, with the help of this, it's able to uh, coordinate all the different uh, aspects of uh, you know air defense system. Its range is not mentioned, but if you remember uh, listening to Major General Rajiv Narayanan, initially it was 295 kilometers because of some considerations. Then they increased it. We don't know how far it goes, but it can go at least cover much of Pakistan. Now, what is exactly the effectiveness of the system? It has the ability to coordinate with long range surveillance radars and surface to air missile systems, ensuring a robust defensive posture against diverse aerial threats. Akashthir has demonstrated its capability to effectively manage and neutralize multiple aerial threats, contributing significantly to India's air defense preparedness. You know, this is where things get really interesting. Looks like Akash Deer did the most of the working, uh, heavy load lifting. It created India's own version of Iron Dome. Now, this has sent global shockwaves. Pentagon analysts were stunned by Akash Deer's stealth penetration of Park and Chinese defenses, prompting the United States to order an internal review of its underestimation of India's defense technology. China's CASC, China Aerospace Center and Technology Corporation and Beidou teams are urgently working to counter Akashthir's algorithms while Beijing's official silence suggests strategic shock. Not only that, Turkey also has been taught a lesson. Turkey's Bayraktar drones were outpaced by India's lighter, faster and stealthier Akashthir drone swarms prompting urgent upgrades in Turkish defense circles. Park experienced a critical failure of its radar and command centers, which failed to detect India's Akashti drones while AVAX, airborne warning and control system and US supplied radars also malfunctioned, triggering panic and a loss of confidence in its defense systems. How did all this happen? How did the United States systems go wrong? How did the Chinese defense systems go wrong? How did the Turkish drones go wrong? So India prepped well. I think that 14 days gap from the time the incident happened in Pahalgam to the time India started taking out the terrorist hideouts. In fact, nothing would have happened if India had just stopped after taking out the nine terrorist hideouts. 
but pakistan was like bristle they thought oh we we can do this we can do that and they started you know mounting missiles they they fired one missile at golden temple in amritsar they fired another missile at vaishno devi temple another one at delhi itself and that's what got india's goat in my opinion they said okay we're going to teach this fellow this fellows a lesson that's why you saw 11 airfields taken out and four nuclear sites probably also disabled what is akash theater how is it constructed it is 100% indigenous tech stack no foreign chips or processors this is this is a big big surprise even i thought that akash had some technology from israel looks like they have indigenized all of it that really gives them that stealth capability the other countries will not know what exactly is going on in this and now it's now it's done it's only going to go from strength to strength while other supplying catch up india will keep furthering and furthering this technology i think it's it's good time for india it might even become a military superpower sooner than you think drdo isro bell synergy delivered, delivered excellence complete strategic autonomy no dependence on nato foreign satellites or gps See, this is a completely internally controlled system nobody even knew where the commands were coming and going you didn't need any of the us space satellites you didn't need any other country satellites for information exchange stealth speed and swarm integration unmatched globally field deployable from mobile units enabling unmatched flexibility so now where does india find itself with? it's no longer playing catch up it is actually leading one might say okay this is just one facet of warfare what about this what about that yes but you notice that whether it is the ukraine russia conflict or the hamas israel conflict or the hezbollah israel conflict or the houthi uh israel conflict where is the majority of the weapon deployment these are all drones and missiles that's where india has uh, you know leapfrogged everybody else who knows israel might come asking can we buy some of your akash tears that would be fun what akash tear also makes is it marks india's rise as a global military tech innovator reshaping the balance of power in south asia and beyond for adversaries it spells confusion helplessness and the need to recalibrate strategies for india it signals sovereign capability operational dominance and a new era in warfare so this this is something which is amazing in my opinion this has come as a very pleasant surprise that india can fully hold its own against some you know much vaunted technologies and and that that really really makes everybody else to sit up and take notice thanks for watching please like share and subscribe to our channel and don't forget to click on the bell button for notifications namaskar